Right, probably many of you who joined tonight uh, are familiar with STEM Week, um, but very briefly, uh, it's an initiative that is, it was really promoted. Um, is this, I think, a fourth year we're doing STEM Week, so 40 years ago by the, the governor's office, and it's been every year, the third week in October, we, we engage in STEM Week statewide. Um, we are, MSCN is one of nine regional networks that is in, really charged by the Massachusetts STEM Council to coordinate and organize events in, in our case in Metro West in support of STEM Week. Um, so for those of you who might, um, are not just the organizations that will present tonight, but who may be schools, after school programs, who in addition are doing, um, for example, the challenges we are proposing tonight, but maybe you are planning other events. Um, it could be a family event, but even if it's a, uh, an event just for your own uh, participants or your own organization, we encourage you to visit our website and to actually post. We have a form to report actually to the state that uh, any organization that promotes a specific STEM or STEAM activity for STEM week, this is a way for, for you to be counted and eventually also to be recognized and to be yeah, included in a, in, a, in a large number. You know, we've been now been hundreds of organizations or events actually, and hundreds of events produced by a large number of organizations over the years. So um, again, if you're planning any activity that is in addition to uh, potentially running one of the STEM challenges that are proposed tonight, please visit our website or check the emails that we send periodically and um, do list your activity with us. For this year, we are welcoming both in-person and virtual um, activities or, or events. So again, just uh, feel free, uh, depending on what you offer or what are the needs of your organization to consider either a, a virtual or in-person um, presentation or activity. Um, thanks, Suzanne. Uh, so I'm Allison Pagliera from the Wade Institute for Science Education. Um, if you're not familiar with us, we're a nonprofit, obviously based in Massachusetts, um, and we do hands-on, minds-on, inquiry-based STEM. Um, uh, and so we do a lot of professional development for teachers and for informal educators. Um, and we really focus on, like I said, inquiry um, and the science and engineering practices and phenomena-based learning is a big thing for us right now. So um, our STEM challenge theme is uh, Hurricane Heroes, Storm City, Massachusetts. And um, we are working with Salem Sound Coast Watch on the North Shore and the Lloyd Center for the Environment down in Dartmouth. Um, and what we'll be bringing is uh, this Storm City challenge. So we're imagining that a hurricane has hit Storm City, Massachusetts, and there is now a flood. And there are several problems that students will need to solve um, as a result. And so in my breakout room presentation, I'll go into each of those challenges and what they involve. And then more about um, our challenge and um, our, our pre-challenge workshops. So you can sign up just for uh, the challenge and get the curriculum guide and do that with your classroom and that would be awesome. But if uh, you are interested, you can also do a pre-challenge workshop. Uh, we have two offerings for that and we'll actually have um, instructors from our team, Salem Sound Post Watch and the Lloyd Center uh, lead you through some of the uh, challenges and investigations from um, the curriculum guide. So I'll talk more about that in the breakout room, but that's just a basic overview of what we're offering. So my name is Kathy Scott. I'm with Coder Z and with me is Amanda Graybo. So Amanda, do you want to say hi real quick so we can see you as well? Hello. Amanda, Amanda and I are partners in um, for Coder Z in Massachusetts. And our STEM Week design challenge is um, through our partnership with Amazon Future Engineer, as you see here. Um, it is the Amazon Cyber Robotics Challenge. Um, it is a three-hour course that teaches at a novice level coding and robotics in an Amazon fulfillment center. Um, we are offering this three-hour course 
for any teachers um, for independent work in grades three through 12 and for teacher directed work in um, K through two. So um, all levels are welcome to join. Um, teachers that participate in a professional development session and have all of their students complete the Amazon Cyber Robotics Challenge. Um, Coder Z is repurposing our award back to teachers in a stipend. Um, and so the teachers that do that will get a stipend of $75. Um, and they, um, at the end of the week, Amazon Future Engineer will also be hosting a live virtual field trip in an Amazon Fulfillment Center. Um, for teachers to participate with their students. This is all virtual, um, but can be done with students in class, face-to-face. -face. Um, but the field trip is a virtual field trip. I don't want to confuse anybody thinking they might get to go to a field trip. They can do that, but not through this. Um, so we are still finalizing our landing page, and we'll have that all ready with all the details on it. Teachers who qualify for Title I will also be able to extend their Coder Z experience. Um, through our partnership again with the Amazon Future Engineer for an additional six months of access to Coder Z curriculum courses um, at no additional cost, just to get that flavor going on and keeping students engaged, um, exposing them to STEM and coding and robotics. Um, Amanda, do you have anything else? Did I miss anything? No, I think you covered it. Hey y'all, my name is Liz Perry. I'm actually in North Carolina and um, I am a partner in my, um, consult, my our consulting firm, uh, STEM Education Insights, which is based in Massachusetts with Carolyn DiCristofano and Kathy, um, her name just to totally escaped me, uh, La Chapelle. And, but we work with Mike um, uh, at Gale Force Education, also with Kidwind. Mike is the founder of Kidwind. And this is our second year participating in Mass STEM Week with this challenge. This is a high school challenge and it's based on the real world um, as all of us are trying to do to help kids understand that. And essentially we are using as a hook the Texas power grid issue that happened last year and using that to explore the threats to the New England grid. Um, so high schoolers will get a chance to uh, collaborate together to build mini grids and then connect them together to form communities and larger communities and um, look for ways to make those resilient to things. We will be doing in-person uh, professional development on October 2nd, which is a Saturday. And all of the participating teachers will receive about $400 of um, gear. So they will receive a goodie box with uh, everything they need for their students to be able to build their mini grids and to connect things together. And then we also have curriculum guides, a Padlet that takes you through um, hour by hour, day by day um, throughout the guide. Um, and then during the week, we will be featuring opportunities for teachers and students to talk with guest speakers in the field. So these could be people at a university studying energy issues or could be professionals in the field uh, from engineers uh, to linemen to or line women <laughs> to problem solvers in energy. And then Mike will also be doing some live webinars for our participants. Hey everyone, sorry, I got my two dogs here. Like, why aren't we outside yet? Um, hey everyone, nice to see a few uh, familiar faces here. Uh, my name is Joe, I'm the director of uh, the United Ways uh, of Mass Bay's Boston Initiative, focused on uh, providing career inspiring STEAM opportunities to our students. Um, we are uh, working very closely with Boston Public Schools on our design challenge, um, but we're also hopeful that if anyone's interested, it'd be very easy for anyone and everyone to take this and make it their own and have it focus on, you know, their region. So really the, the general idea is we want to take uh, this, um, this idea of students as uh, citizen scientists and really identifying a problem in their community gathering some data, uh, doing some research on the problem, uh, designing a solution uh, to that problem, uh, and really focused around how do we improve the health of our city, you know, using STEAM and STEAM practices. Um, the product for this, aside from their solution, will also be a social justice oriented product, whereby they'll do things like, you know, write a letter to their representative, 
uh, create a fact sheet, maybe do a social media campaign, something like that. So it's not just them making this, um, you know, solution in isolation. It's really focused on trying to make that change and advocate for for uh, that change. So that's kind of what we're going to be doing in a nutshell. Um, we'll be providing some physical resources to teachers um, for students to do data collection, like pocket labs and micro bits and stuff like that. But there's also a ton of uh, free resources as well that are, that are available to folks. Hi everyone, my name is Olu Ibrahim. I'm the Executive Director of Kids in Tech. And our challenge this year is welcome to artificial intelligence and machine learning, smart systems, and smart assistants. So in this curriculum, it's designed to introduce, introduce middle school students to smart technology through coding activities, both um, adaptable for virtual and in-class instruction. Um, our hope is that kids get a really good understanding of machine learning and artificial intelligence in a fun and engaging way. Um, they will have a series of um, projects leading up to creating their smart cities. So for instance, um, one of the activities is students will train a machine learning mod mo model to recognize a face so that they can unlock the their phone for the right person. So in this challenge, students will learn about facial recognition, and explore that ethical responsibilities of being able to use that type of technology, um, for instance. Um, another activity that they'll do is a smart classroom. So students will be able to control virtual devices in the classroom by making ver uh, verbal commands. So they'll be using Scratch, which is you know, free software for everyone, um, and easily, easily assess accessible, as well as machine learning for kids. So they'll be using those two modules to do these series of activities and after, as each activity will get progressively harder. And then they'll use everything that they've learned during that week to create their own virtual, um, their own virtual city. Uh, so their hope is that kids understand that the city of the future is gonna be really um, dictated by technology. So they're gonna be using artificial intelligence and machine learning, which are concepts that engineers use now to create smart cities. So they'll be able to be coded and then they'll do like a virtual, um, uh, sorry, a visual representation of it. So um, that's our challenge for this year. Our our uh, website it should be up in the next week or so, so people can go to our website and download it. And we hope to have office hours, so we can um, so we can answer any questions you guys may have. So I hope that you guys will join us, and you guys can email us at info@kidsintech.org if you have any questions. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Leslie Kennedy, and I use the pronouns she and her. I'm from the Museum of Science, and we're really excited to take some wonderful challenges that we built last year for the virtual environment and to grow those out so that they will work well for teachers and students in classrooms, um, and also that we can uh, deliver them on in the museum in our brand new um, engineering design workshop exhibit. So we have three challenges at three different grade bands. So for the youngest learners, we have a designing a model turtle habitat challenge. And for the grade three to five, we have sustainable solutions for marine resources. And for grade six to eight, we have make it dream. So we started by looking at the UN um, sustainability objectives. There's 16 and we really focused in on the ones that related to water in order to build these, um, these lessons. And so in addition to the lessons which live in our, in our learn learning management system, and so they're easy to deliver. Um, we also will have educated, educator PD webinars to help teachers prepare. We're considering doing this in an asynchronous model so teachers can utilize these whenever they have time. Um, we'll have a, a kickoff call on, on the Monday. There'll be some educator office hours during the week. So if an educator is engaging in one of these challenges and wants a little bit more support, they'll be able to call in and talk to one of our educators and get some, some insight. Um, we had a lot of success last year with stormwater engineer um, panelists. Uh, again, we did a lot of those. It was a little hard schedule for people to attend. So we're looking at doing the same kind of experience where teachers can bring these, these professionals into their classrooms that relate to our design challenges um, and really hear from somebody who's, who's doing this work professionally. But again, we're hoping to do that in an asynchronous way so that it's really seamless, that teachers can use it whenever it makes sense. And then um, to wrap up the week, we'll have an, an online showcase of uh, some of the solutions to these different design challenges. Um, so that's what I have now, and we'll go a little deeper in when we do breakouts.